Good evening. Let's have some come and pray like we started the previous nights if we could. Let's have some ladies over here, some fellows over here, or if families want to pray together, you can. Right here at the beginning, let's just come to the altar. Be sure and take a few minutes and thank the Lord because He has been good. He has been real good. We still got some folks coming in, but let's go ahead and pray a little bit around the altar. Some of you ladies come over here and pray for us. Yes. thank you for what you did Lord in my heart this week and thank you for what you did and, and different men of God this week Lord I just uh, look back at all the different uh, services the different preachers that preach Lord every one of them has been right on target the balance God and how much you've helped us and I pray Lord we'd go back and take it to our home churches Lord and not forget what we got here I pray Jesus that you would uh, just continue to work in the hearts those that are fighting battles Lord just help them to know you're with them. You won't leave us, God. You'll never forsake us. I pray that you'll uh, put your hand on the men of God that'll preach tonight. I pray that you'd give us a power-packed meeting tonight, Lord. I pray that you'd put your fresh anointing on all the men of God that preach tonight and the choir that sings. And uh, Lord, just again, I, I just want to thank you and praise you for what you've already did this week. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.
being in church tonight. Those of you that have been to all the services, I want to thank you for that. And I believe the Lord has already repaid you for it if you've been in these services. If you were here last night, it was worth coming. I'm telling you, the glory of the Lord settled in on us, and we praise Him for that. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. And uh, while you bow your heads, just play softly, if you would, Miss Scott. There's a, a family in our church, a family in our town, whose uh, teenage son was killed in a car wreck today. Let me make sure I get the name here. I got it right here. It's the uh, Hensley family. It looks like Alec. Is that how you say that? His name was Alec. And uh, he was killed in a wreck today or yesterday. Was it today? This morning. And uh, several of our church folks know the family. He went to the high school over here, McDowell High. And so I want you to pray for that family right now, all right? And we'll pray the Lord to help us here tonight. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be in church. And we thank you, Lord, that we are on the winning side. We praise you for the grace of God that makes us able in our hard times to have joy of the Lord and in our tough times to experience the grace of God. And we praise you for that. Lord, we do pray for this family. I don't know them personally, but Lord, I know this, their hearts are broken tonight. I cannot imagine what it is that they're going through. And we pray that you would comfort them. We pray that you would be with them. I ask you to be with uh, the preachers, whoever they are that are helping this family, that you'd give them grace and wisdom, Lord, to be a blessing. And we pray that your Holy Spirit would uh, bless them. And not only that, but bless the friends of this young man. And Lord, we pray that you would take this tragedy and make something good come out of it. Maybe somebody would be saved as a result of it, or perhaps some uh, young folks would give their lives to you as a result of this uh, tragedy. And Lord, we pray that you'd use it, make good come from it as you said you could. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless the family. We do ask you to continue to help Matt Davis. Thank you that they have got him stable, but Lord, he's looking like a really long recovery. We pray you'd comfort him and his dear wife be with them. And we ask you, Father, to help us tonight. We thank you so much uh, for the services that we've had last night. It was a wonderful all day yesterday. And then today, Lord, this morning's uh, meet sessions were, were unbelievable. And then the service this morning was precious again. And the children singing this morning stirred our hearts. Brother Tim's preaching. And we praise you for that. But Lord, we want something fresh from you tonight. We don't mean to sound greedy or selfish, but we know uh, that we need you. As David said, the first thing of the first night, Lord, we need you to help us. And Lord, I'm thankful you have been helping us. We ask you to do it again. Be with the preaching that is to come. Be with Brother Mattis. He'll stand in a minute. I pray that you'd fill him with your spirit like never before. Give him liberties to set him on fire right here in front of our eyes that we might watch him. And Lord, be blessed by it. And Lord, I pray for Brother Fleur as he'll come after that, that you'd bless and use him. Thank you for his friendship and how he's been a help to our church over the last couple of years. And be with Trinity, their choir as they sing in just a little bit. We appreciate their friendship. And uh, Lord, what a blessing it is to just uh, serve with them as many times as you let us. And we praise you for it. And we ask you now to bless our choir and then this, the congregational singing and everything that's said or done. Lord, we want it to be in your will. We want it to be a blessing to your people. And we want it to please you as well. We do love you. Thank you for everything. Bless us now in Jesus' name. And all God's people say it. Amen. All right, listen while the choir sings again.
we carry on through love's tools and tests in the worst and best i'm not ever left alone you're always right beside me you hear me every time i pray since i first began you've been my dearest friend and i just want to give you thanks thanks i give you thanks for all you Continually, for each day I live, your grace you give, I am blessed abundantly. I will never forget that moment when in my life you made such a change. And since your spirit came, I've not been the same, and I just want to give you thanks. I give you thanks for all. While the choir's coming down and shake hands with somebody around you there, find you a hymn book, we'll sing one together here in just a minute. Praise the Lord. Get you a hymn book now. Turn to 230. 200. 230. This is Brother Jonathan Marshall. Brother Jonathan spoke to the men this morning in our men's session. Also led the uh, singing there in the men's session. Brother Jonathan's assistant pastor at Hope Baptist Church in Toledo, Ohio. His dad was a, an evangelist and his family traveled and sang for years and years and years. There was eight girls and two boys and mom and dad all on a bus. Pretty exciting, right, brother? <laughs> Pretty exciting. Hopefully in the morning when he's pre he's got to tell at least one story. I'm telling you, you just need to sit around and listen to him talk about living on the bus with eight girls and mom and dad and dogs and cats and everything. It's mass pandemonium. No cats? Never. Oh, never cats? Never. Well, I'm sorry. You don't got to get so defensive back here behind me. <laughs> All right, he's going to help us sing. Now listen, you need to watch him and listen while we're singing. He may not, he's, he's from up north. Now are you from up north? He's born in West Virginia. We're probably cousins. <laughs> Maybe closer than that. <laughs> he said we're closer than I want to be. Right? <laughs> oh boy. So I want you to watch him and listen and let's sing from our heart. All right, sing it unto the Lord. All right, number 230. Do you find it? How many know this song already? Would you raise your hand? Okay, good. So we're not alone. Just a few of us here. Let's try it. Are you ready, Miss Scott? 
Ready on the first. A pilgrim was I and no wandering. In the cold night of sin I did roam. When Jesus the kind shepherd found me. And now I am on my way home. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. On the second now. He restoreth my soul when I'm weary. He giveth me strength day by day. He leads me beside the still water. He guards me each step of the way. Here we go, lift it now. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. All right, now we're going to sing that third stanza in just a moment. And you get to the end there. You see that on the second page? It says D.C. What we're going to do at that point, when we get to that point, now we're going to go way up high and sing, And I shall dwell. It's going to get nice and high, so you got to stay with me, okay? Can you do that again? And I shall dwell. Did you like that? <laughs> All right. So we're going to watch for it at the end. Now, y'all are singing good. But you're not singing great because you don't know it yet. Amen? But uh, aren't you glad we have uh, a song? I like what somebody said about this, Shirley. Goodness and mercy, those God's two sheepdogs, make sure we get to heaven. Amen? Goodness and mercy following us all the way home. I'm glad he gives us that goodness and mercy every day. Now we're going to sing that last stanza. Be ready. We're going to climb up the ladder. Here we go on the third. Are you ready, Miss Scott? When I walk through the dark, lonesome valley, my Savior will walk with me there, and safely his great hand will lead me to the mansions he's gone to bring. Yes, amen. Let's sing it now. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of the Y'all sing it now. Yes. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. Here we go. And I should dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I should feast at the tables spread for me. shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life, all the days, all the days of my life. Let's do that chorus one more time, and we'll jump up there, grab that high part, and then repeat at the end. Y'all are singing great tonight. Now, some of you, did you know it and you forgot it? Anybody? I don't know, but you got a great group of singers here. I'm telling care what people say about you. <laughs> and they say it. All right, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Here we go. Chorus, ready? Surely goodness and mercy shall fall. Come on now. All the days. Yes, my life. Surely goodness and mercy shall fall. Oh! 
All right, you can be seated just for a minute. Brother Ken's going to come and give us a few announcements. Now, listen, I said it last night. Let me say it again tonight. Don't get in a hurry, okay? Let's give the Lord a chance. Give him some time. Boy, last night we waited around, and right near the end, he just made it all worth waiting for. Poured his glory out on us. It's been good from the beginning, but let's just take our time. Try to get your mind off of everything else and get focused on the Lord. Get focused on him. Try to quit looking around and see who's here and picking this one out and that one out and what they're wearing and how they look and how they're smiling or not smiling and just... Get your mind on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll focus on Him and you'll ask Him to help you, He'll help you in this place tonight. I believe that with all my heart. Brother Ken's going to come give you just a couple of announcements. I want you to listen to those. And then I'll go have Brother Jonathan come right back and lead us in another one. And then Brother Matt's going to come preach right after that song. All right? So listen to these announcements. All right. Not much. Just remember that uh, if you're just coming in for the first service tonight, after the service, we will be eating out at the gym. Plan on going out there and having some fellowship. And then Brother Jason, the bookstore will be open after the service. So if you want a CD or some things, you can go over there. And tomorrow morning, listen to New Manna, um, all the A Sunday School classes will be in here. They won't have any A Sunday Schools unless you have one of the littler classes, which are combination A and B. Uh, if you have any bus kids in your class, you still have to go teach your class. So keep that in mind for in the morning. But everybody else will be in here at 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm going to have to stall just for a minute because our guest song leader is over at the piano working on something here just for a second. What number you got, brother? The Phantom Song Leader. He just disappeared on us. What number you got this time? Oh, uh, whatever you want to do. 482. Let's go there. 482. Let's stand up. He's going to learn us a new one. I don't say that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Huh? Yeah, Brother Ken, whenever Brother Ken goes to a new one, they all look at me in my chair and they wait to see if I'm okay with it. And I'm okay with it. Sort of. Okay, we'll see how it goes. We might stop right in the middle and go sing till the storm passes by, okay? Yeah, yeah. 482, let's rear right back and sing it out good and loud. Okay, now who's the brother on the, on the bass over here? Josh, okay, he said y'all used to sing this one, maybe. Years ago, back in the day, when y'all were right with God. <laughs> Amen? It's been a long time, hasn't it? So before I got here, I was to see I'm not saying it was before Pastor Shirley was here. I'm just saying it's been a long time. All right, let's try 482. Now, does anybody know this song? Raise your hand if you know it. Now, this is a, this is a, this is a song, really, I think, I don't know this for a positive fact, but I believe it was written for congregational singing. And so it's tough to pull it off without a large group of people. So we're going we're gonna to do it. we got a large group of people here tonight. We're going to try it. Now, if you don't know it, Welcome to the club. A lot of you don't know it out there. It's no big deal. We're going to try it. We're going to see how we do it. Now, if anything wrong with it, I'm going to throw it over to the piano player. It's her fault, all right? No, so I'm just kidding. She doesn't know it either. We're going, to learn, we're going to learn it together, all right? I'll sing a verse for you, and I want you to notice. Look down on the chorus. You see that? Male voices unison. That's what I'm talking about. Where? Amen. Amen. Let the men sing for once. Yeah. And the men are going to sing, and the ladies are going to... Sing their backup ground singers, okay? <clears throat> At the top. You sing that wonderful, wonderful, like that. And the men sing, oh, it is wonderful, like that. And then you get to the second page, the ladies take over again at the top, like of course. All right? At the second page, ladies take over. Amen. <laughs> All right. I'll sing you a verse. Are you ready? Here we go. The Savior has come in his mighty power and spoke in peace to my soul. And all of my life from that very hour, I've yielded to his control. I've yielded to his control. Now the man. Oh, it is wonderful. It is marvelous and wonderful. Wonderful, what Jesus has done for this soul of mine, the half has never been told. Oh, it is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful, what Jesus has done for this soul of mine, the Oh, 
this one, it'll make you sing right here. This is a good song. But you gotta, it kind of gets high. Like I said, we like high songs. And they do that because when you sing higher, your voice is clearer and it has a nice bell tone to it. Most of us. Amen. Most. <laughs> All right, and even though it gets high, it's 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 written that way on purpose. All right, so how many of you got a little idea how it goes? <laughs> Where's that prayer group again? Let's get them down here. Here we go. First stands. Are you ready? Now don't don't lag behind. Bum 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 like that. That's what we're doing. Da 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 da. Here we go. One two three go. The Savior has come in his mighty power and spoken peace to my soul. And all of my life from that very hour, I've yielded to his control. I've yielded to his control. All the men now. Oh, it is wonderful. It is marvelous and wonderful. What Jesus has done for this soul of mine, the half has never been told. Now, ladies, oh, it is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful. All together now, what Jesus has done for this soul of mine, the You're getting together. Now, don't forget, when I say ladies, that means ladies are singing the melody line again. Before, they were kind of singing back up ground, and now they take over the melody. But the men, we can sing the melody with them, too. All right? Here we go on the second now. T'was only a foretaste of joys divine in Canaan waiting for me. Where sweetest of honey and milk and wine We're dripping from every tree We're dripping from every tree How are we doing, Brother Tony? We doing right? Oh, it is wonderful It is marvelous and wonderful What Jesus has done for this soul of mine The half has never been told From glory to glory he leads me on, from grace to grace every day. And brighter and brighter the glory dawns, while pressing my homeward way, while pressing my homeward way. Help us now, man. Oh, it is wonder, it is marvelous and wonderful. Jesus has done for this soul of mine, the half has never been told. Oh, it is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful, what Jesus has done for this soul of mine. working hard. So let me hear the ladies sing that part, just the first part of the chorus to see what, what parts you're singing. It's sounding good. I really feel like it's sounding good. But I want to hear a little more of it. So let's try that on the chorus. Ladies, you get that? Wonderful. Ready? Here we go, ladies. Wonderful. Marvelous and one. Yep. What he has done for my soul. The half has never been told. Oh, my friends and family and relations, that sounds good. <laughs> I don't know why anybody complain about that right there. 
Amen. Now, now listen, put up with the Yankee now, okay? Just, just roll with it, okay? You can talk when I'm gone. As if you're not going to talk when I'm here. Fourth stanza. Now, we get to that chorus, ladies. Give, it, give a little more volume. And men, we got to have that manliness come out of, yes, of nowhere. Bring it out from under the beard. Oh, right? Here we go. Four stands are ready together. If fellowship here with my Lord can be so inexpressibly sweet. And it is. Oh, what will it be when his face we see? When round the white throne we meet. When round the white throne we meet. Here we go, gentlemen. Oh, it is wonderful. It is marvelous. And one, yes, yeah, sing it, saints, has done for this soul of mine. The half has never been told. Oh, it is wonderful, it is marvelous and wonderful. What Jesus has done for this soul of mine. Tonight, you want to sing the love of God? Okay, number 189. 189. Amen. Amen. Now, 189, you know this one? This is the same timing as the last one. Six, eight time. Don't you love it? Now, let me tell you this. I'll tell you this, folks. You say, uh, we get, I'll tell you what happens in a lot of times in churches. He didn't ask me to say this, but I'm going to say it. Uh, we get bored and we'll sing it. And we'd rather listen to special music and it gets us going. But the truth of the matter is, uh, we have a, a command in Scripture over and over again to sing to the Lord. And we need to do it. We need to work at it. And it's not just when it gets on. Amen. We need to bring it to the service instead of waiting for God to bring it. We're going to worship Him and praise Him. You say, well, I'm not a singer. I don't see that in Scripture anywhere. You don't have to sing if you can't sing. He just said, he just went ahead and said, sing. Amen. So let's do it. Let's do it to the Lord tonight. Number 189. Oh, how I love Jesus. Here we go. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's worth its sound. Ladies, are you ready? On that third, ladies, all together. It tells me. Come on, ladies. Keep going, ladies. Keep going. Sing, ladies. Just a minute, think about that time when you first met Jesus Christ. Remember? I heard all about him all my life. It wasn't until I was 12 years old and I knelt down and I said, Lord, I know you. I've heard all about you, but I don't know you. And I remember kneeling there 
And uh, I remember seeing the cross of Christ and realizing he was, I was the reason that he was on that cross. Man, if that don't make you love him, then nothing would. Amen? Amen? Let's sing that fourth stanza. Now let's give the men a chance. On the fourth, you sing, and then we'll break, bring the ladies back in on the chorus. All right, gentlemen, here we go. It tells of one whose love can fill my deepest woe. Sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. All together now, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. excited tonight to have uh, one of our own, Brother Matt McDaniels, our assistant pastor, had been in this church about his whole life, except for when his dad was off pastoring, he took him with him then, been in our school, graduated from our school, been a friend to this church, been a good servant, and uh, the Lord's hand is on Brother Matt, now he's probably nervous tonight, and uh, that's good, it's good for him to be nervous, and he's going to be a blessing to you, he was just with me in Cuba two weeks ago or I guess not this week, but last week, and I'm telling you, the Lord used him tremendously there. Uh, it, was a ble- it was a blessing to watch the Lord use him. So he's going to be a blessing to you tonight. You help him, and you let the Lord speak to you, all right? You come on, preach, brother man. Right there. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. That was good singing, wasn't it? That was exciting. I think my hair caught on fire a few times while he was leading it. That was good. He's hilarious, isn't he? That was like... Comedy Hour Congregational right there. Amen. That's good stuff. But I appreciate the privilege to be here tonight. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> so uh, I had a conversation with Brother Tony. I guess it's been about, uh, about a month and a half ago. He pulled me aside and he said, Now, brother, he said, I'm going to ask you to do something. He said, You can't say no. I told him, I said, Brother, me and my family would be glad to go to the Bahamas for a week. You don't have to ask it to be fine. <laughs> It'd be all right. And he said, no. He said, I'm going to have you preach uh, Saturday night at the camp meeting. And he said, you're going to preach your brother Tim Floor. I thought, well, great. <laughs> I thought, I got to preach with Spurgeon's cousin on Saturday night. <laughs> Isn't that a blessing? Amen. And then today he pulls me aside as if, you know, to try and uh, downplay his message. And he says, look, brother, he said, I just have a a little thought tonight. He said, and so he said, I'm going to talk to Brother Tony about me going first. And, you know, I started thinking about the message he preached on Job had no Bible, which is like the second greatest sermon in American history besides sinners in the hands of an angry God. (laughs) Just a little thought. I thought there ain't no chance. If he preaches first, I'm leaving. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Where's Brother Matt? He's not here. So I would not have showed up for church, but uh, I do want to say that it's a privilege and I appreciate uh, I appreciate this church, and I've, uh, me and my family have given our life to this place, and we love it, and uh, don't intend on going anywhere, and I appreciate how the Lord's helped us this week, amen, and how God spoke to our heart. I'm just going to tell you that if, the, if you hadn't heard from the Lord this week, then you just hadn't been listening. Amen. God's been real good to us. He's been speaking, and sometimes, you know, we have a hard time uh, listening to the Lord. Which reminds me of a terrible story uh, I just thought about here We had this past Sunday uh, Me and my dad and uh, brother Cole We work a bus route And go out and pick up these wonderful uh, Wonderful bus children that love the Lord all the time 24 hours a day I mean, seven days a week And we, we pick up one And he is a uh, You know I'm not sure if the Antichrist has a son But if he does th- th- This guy's in the running for it That's no doubt about it And so he gets on the bus. As soon as he does, he runs straight to the back of the bus and starts poking this girl in the chest and just hits her over and over again. I'll try not to say the boy's name. He's watching live stream. We love you, son. But, uh, and uh, he's on the bus, and I finally said, son, you got to sit down and quit it. And uh, he's, uh, he don't like to listen. He's about 11 years old. So sure enough, he sat down. We made a couple stops. And finally, we pulled into where his buddy lives, and uh, he didn't get on the bus. And so he sits back down there, and he said, take me home. 
I said, we're not taking you home. I said, we're 10 minutes away from your house. I said, we're going to church. I want to go home, he said. I said, we're not going to your house. And uh, so he sat down uh, in the back of the bus, and I started hearing. I looked, he's hitting the bus window. I said, no, son, you need to stop that. And uh, he jumped to the other side and started going, hitting it. I said, son, you need to stop that. Then, just to, uh, just to really bless me, he lays down in the seat flat on his back and takes his foot and starts going, trying to kick the bus wind out. And I got real spiritual then, and I said, son, you need to stop it. <laughs> I got in the back. He looked at me. He said, you can't tell me what to do. I said, son, yes, I can. <laughs> Amen. About that time, I was... Uh, I was getting real spiritual. And uh, I said, look, I said, you're going to break the window. And as I started talking to him, here's what he did. He started going. <laughs> I felt a breath from another world. <laughs> and it wasn't a good one. Amen. I said, now, son, I said, if you break the bus window, I said, you're going to pay. Oh, he, said the, he said, the church will pay for it. My mom ain't got no money. He said, I don't care what you say. I went in front of the bus. I said, Dad, we're taking him home. <laughs> I said, let's turn this bus around. We're taking him home. And you know what he said? I'm not going home. I said, oh, son, you're going home. <laughs> I said, you don't think you are, but you're going home. And so uh, the whole time there, he, he just kept hitting it. And we pulled up in his driveway, and I knew he wasn't getting off the bus. And so I run off the bus and went in there and just uh, talked to his family. Uh, and uh, found, uh, I found his uncle, and I said, man, I said, we're having some problems with this boy. And I said, you're going to have to come get him. I said, he's not going to get off the bus. And but before I got off, he started crying. He said, I'm not getting off the bus. I said, you're getting off the bus. And so his uncle got on there, and I was, I was excited. Because, you know, a lot of things go through your mind, and I, I just kept saying to myself, he's not worth going to prison over. He's not worth going to prison over. You know, <laughs> keep your hands off him. I, I told Dad, too. Me and him are a little high strung, hot tempered. And I said, uh, you know, if he does something crazy, just don't touch him. Keep your hands off. So I, I got his... Uh, Got his uncle on there, and uh, son, it was, it was wild. Uh, all these kids were sitting on the bus, and he goes back there, and he said, get off the bus, and the boy, he wouldn't budge. And so then the boy's got an earring in his ear, and then he grabbed him by the ear and starts ripping his ear off. I was going, glory to God. <laughs> get him, son, get him. And he started grabbing him by the ear, and boy, that boy never would come. And so he got, he got down sort of in the wrestling position and picked him up and was throwing him over top of his uh, shoulder. And he got him on his shoulder like that trying to carry him off the bus. The boy just beating him on the back. Here all these bus kids are just... You know, watching this scene, I thought, well, praise the Lord, here this goes. And he carries it. I mean, boy, he's trying to get him off the bus. And finally, as he walks out the door, he's got a hold of the bars right there, and he's not letting go. He keeps pulling. And by this time, the uncle is really upset. I mean, he is, uh, I'm not sure if he's saved to start with, but he's really hot. And uh, he, he pulls, him off the, pulls him off the bus. And when he does, man, he puts him on the ground, and he starts putting... A, uh, a beating on him like I've not seen. I mean, he is just wearing him out. And I sat on the bus, I was watching, I was going, hit him again! Hit him again! <laughs> hey man, you say, what'd you do? We pulled off, hey man? As I was cheering on the back of the bus. Get him! I love the kid, but I really wanted to beat him. That guy did everything I wanted to do, hey amen? It's such a fulfilling Sunday last week, so I can't wait to see what's on the, what's on the menu for tomorrow. <laughs> He won't be with us in the morning, just in case you're wondering. So, so you don't want to meet him. He, he won't be here. But sometimes we have a hard time listening. Amen. And God's got to beat us to get us to hear him. But I'm glad if we'll just open our ears to the Lord, man, he can bless us in a way that we just couldn't possibly imagine uh, is available. Why don't you take your Bibles tonight, turn to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 7. And I'm going to try and uh, get through this. I, I do appreciate the privilege, even though I... Just giving him a hard time. I do appreciate Brother Fuller and the blessing he's been to our church, and I want to make sure he has adequate time here tonight. First Samuel chapter 12. We're just going to read one verse of scripture. We'll give you a little introduction tonight. Then I'm just going to try and obey the Lord and be a blessing to you. That's all I know how to be. We've heard some great messages this week, but I just want to share my heart with you and be a help to you tonight. First Samuel chapter 12. 1 Samuel chapter, excuse me, 7. Let's look at verse number 12. 1 Samuel chapter 7. If I said 12, I apologize. Some people say, you know, they got them butterflies and they get preaching, they start flying in formation. Mine just been puking all day. So uh, <laughs> they're going to be too weak to fly here in a few minutes. <laughs> verse number 12. Here we go. The Bible says this. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shin and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying... 
Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Now, if you look in this passage here, Samuel erected this monument because he wanted to acknowledge that the Lord had delivered them from their enemy. And if you look back to this passage here, you begin to realize and you see the purpose for the place where this stone was set up. And uh, verses 1 and 2, we're not going to take time tonight to read through this, but in verses 1 and 2 it takes us back about 20 years to a time when the Philistines came in and they took the ark of God. And the children of Israel suffered a major defeat that day at the hand of their enemy. And in 1 Samuel chapter 4, you know the ark of God was symbolic of the presence of the Lord. And that was taken out of their land. And when that happened, the Bible tells us that the glory departed. And they began to follow after strange gods. But I want you to notice just by way of introduction in this story where this stone was placed. It was a place of Repentance, Because in verse number 3 of chapter 7, Samuel begins to speak to the people. And, and the Bible says, Samuel spake unto them, unto the house of Israel, saying, If you do return unto the Lord with all your heart, and then put away the strange gods and Ashtaroth from among you, and prepare your heart unto the Lord, and serve him only, he will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines. And the Bible says, Then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Ashtaroth, and serve the Lord only. This Ebenezer stone signified, if you will, the place where they came back to God. It was set up as a monument. It was a place to remind them of the, of the repentance, their repentance toward God himself. And I begin to think about that. And you know what? I'm glad I've got a place in my life where I came back to God. Amen. As a young person, I was 17 years old. My life was a wreck. And you know what? I went out to a youth camp that has as much meaning to me as it does anybody in this room tonight. I can take you to the very place on that altar, listen, where uh, I gave my life back to God and met, met him there at that place of repentance. It was a place not only of repentance, but it was a place of revival if you read through this passage. Man, God began to manifest himself in just an extraordinary way in this passage. In verses 10 and 11, we find out the Bible says, And Samuel was offered up the burnt offering, and the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mizpeth and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came under Bethkar. Listen, in this very place where they had been defeated 20 years earlier, now they experienced victory. You say, why is that? Because there was a divine visitation and manifestation of God's presence in that place. And Samuel, if you will, set up this stone and erected this monument uh, to just sort of, uh, you know, cause them to look at it and think, boy, this is where God manifested his power. And as they would walk by that stone, uh, they would often think, man, this was the place where God paid us a visit. And I thank God, listen, as well tonight, that I've got some places in my life, as Brother Eddie preached about some last night, some special places where God has paid me a visit and met with me. But the message tonight we'll find in this place, and that was it was a place of remembrance. And in verse number 12, the Bible says this. Samuel said this little phrase at the end. I want to preach on this thought tonight. He said, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And the prophet took this stone to mark the place so that, if you will, the people would never forget what God had done for them. And what a great victory that God wrought that day in their life. And I begin to notice that little word, hitherto, the Bible says, hath the Lord helped us. You know what? That little word, hitherto, it simply links the past to the present to the future. And if you look back, you could say, hitherto and hitherto and hitherto hath the Lord helped us. But you know what? It's not just a powerful statement to me. It's a personal story. Hey, hitherto hath the Lord helped me tonight in my life. Amen? I don't just look at this verse and say, God, thank you for what you did for Samuel, but I can look up tonight in my life where I stand today and say, by the grace of God, hitherto hath the Lord helped me. I can look in my past tonight and say that very clearly. Times in my life where God worked in my heart and my family, and you can as well, and you can look back and say, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. We can look at our present and speak those words, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. 
we had a time last night and the Lord began to speak to my heart through that service and that choir was singing, I've come by the way of the cross. And then God just began to overcome my heart last night as I thought about the fact that he would give his life for me. Man, I come to the altar and started praying. I was, I was already about, you know, three sheets in the wind spiritually, and my little boy just snuggled up beside me, and he put his head underneath my arm, and I stopped praying. I said, son, I said, you realize how good that God is? I said, man, Micah, we can't beat living for Jesus. And just, I just sort of talked with him on the altar, and God flooded my soul. You know what I got to say? That last night, hitherto hath the Lord helped me. Boy, did a work in my heart. And you know what? Thank God I can look into my future. And on the other side of eternity, Brother BJ, when I look in the face of God, I'll stand around and see where I stand. And the boy, Lord, hitherto hath the Lord helped me. And tonight, if you will, for just a minute, it do us good to just remember tonight how the Lord has helped us. Well, Brother David said that the other night. What a blessing that is, how that God's helped us. Let me say tonight quickly that he's guided us with his providence. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. I begin to think about Ruth. And the Bible says in chapter 2 and verse 2, the Bible says in Ruth the Moabite said unto Naomi, let me go now to the field. You know, when I read that passage, I thought little did this Moabite woman know that when she left the house that day, God was about to change her life. <laughs> She had no idea of the divine providence that was already at work in her circumstances. And boy, I thank God that's the way our life was. That, hey, listen, we had no idea of what we were doing or where we were going. Little did we know in the background somewhere God was already at work and his handiwork was involved in our life. I started thinking that God was providentially, how God providentially guided her to the right family. In verse 5 of chapter 2 it says, Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, Whose damsel is this? He looked across the field and Boaz saw where she was and he took an interest in her life. And you know what? God arranged a divine appointment for her to meet Boaz, by the way, which is a picture of Christ. And she came to him having nothing to offer. Yet you know what the Bible says? That she found favor in his eyes. Amen. Hey, she came to him in hopes that one day he might redeem her. And you know what, in order for that to happen, you know this, but in, in order for somebody to perform the duties of a kinsman redeemer, they had to be in the right bloodline. And they had to have the means to buy back a lost inheritance and they had to be willing. But you know what, Ruth realized that there was a near kinsman in her life and when he refused to mar his own inheritance to redeem her, I'm glad that Boaz stepped up in his place. And you know what, when he was given the opportunity to redeem her, he met all the qualifications. Amen. And by the way, let me just say so to Jesus. Amen. Hey, he was in the right bloodline. The Bible says he was of the root and the offspring of David. Hey, he had the means. The Bible says the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Hey, but more than anything, he was willing to do it. What a blessing that is. Hey, God in heaven was willing to mar himself so that I might be made a child of God. And what a blessing that is. And Ruth looks back at her life and she never imagined well, she could be part of a family like this. Boy, can you believe that God allowed you to be part of his family? What a blessing that that is tonight that he'd take us. But not only that, I want you to see that God providentially guided her not only to the right family but to the right field. In verse number 3 of chapter 2, the Bible says her half was to light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz which was of the kindred of Elimelech. The Bible says, use that word hap, Brother Stroud mentioned it the other day. It was just her hap to fall in the field where he was. And I started thinking, boy, I'm so glad God got involved in the happenings of my life. And you know what? God not only arranged for her to be at the right place and to meet the right person, but he arranged for her to be there at the right time. The Bible says at the beginning of barley harvest. You say, what's that all about? Well, during this time, the reaper would get permission from the master to reap in his field. And as the reaper goes out into the field, if it's been a good crop that year, it's impossible for him to carry all that grain. And as he begins to reap the abundance of grain, there would be times when some would slip through his fingers and fall to the ground. And when that happened, the gleaner, which was an outcast and a stranger, and had no right to glean unless they were granted 
And Ruth was one of those. She was a gleaner in the best. Listen to this. The best she could ever hope for was to find a grain or two every now and then in the field. Hey, that somehow, accidentally, some of that grain would slip through the hands of those reapers and she would begin to gather it. But you know what? When Boaz got involved in her life, things began to change. He told one of the servants one day, he said, let her follow you in the field. He said, and every now and then, not by accident, he said, but by divine purpose. He said, you drop some of those handfuls of grain for her. And I could just see it in my mind's eye. I could imagine Ruth walking through that field, just picking up a piece or two every now and then. But buddy, she cuts the, listen, she cuts the corner on that row. And buddy, when she did, she found more in that field than she ever imagined. And you know what? Hey, I thought tonight about this. You remember when you used to glean in the fields of sin? How that only ever finding a grain or two and never enough to satisfy or to, set, or to sustain your life. But you know something? When you stepped into the field of grace in your life, you got more than you ever bargained for, friend. <laughs> Hey, you got more than you ever bargained for. And I looked at this, and you know what? I thought all of a sudden she's got everything she never had before. And she sits back, and her future looks real good from this side of the field. Hey, she goes from nothing, listen, to a handful, and then to a heart full, to a house full, and to a life full of the grace of God. And you know something? I thank God for the family and for the field that he's put me in. But can I just tell you? that whenever I was 17 years old and God called me to preach, I had no idea where I'd be today. Can I tell you, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life or what God was going to do with my life. I said, Lord, I want to surrender it and give it to you when I was just 17. But you know what? God saw something down the road that I couldn't see. <laughs> Hey, God saw a field that I would be so privileged to be a part of. And I don't understand it tonight, but I just know hitherto hath the Lord helped me. And God brought me to this place tonight. It's not because I deserve to be here. My goodness, uh, you could have uh, you know, you stayed home for the first preacher tonight and been better benefited. But you know what? I thank God that he has divinely guided my life. Providentially got involved in where I am. And by the way, if you think you ended up where you are tonight because of your own volition, man, you've got another thing coming. If it hadn't been for God getting involved in your life, you wouldn't be in church on Saturday night. Don't kid yourself. Hey, God's been good to us. Not only has he guided us with providence, let me say this to you tonight, he has gifted us with provision. Now, Brother Tony started talking to me earlier, I guess a couple weeks ago, about some thoughts he had heard from this. I want to share some, some of those things with you tonight. I begin to think about the brothers of Joseph. And in Genesis 42, verse 25, the Bible says, Then Joseph commanded their sacks to be filled with corn. Watch this now. And to restore every man's money into his sack. And to give them provision for the way. And thus did he unto them. Now Joseph was not only their brother, he was a wonderful picture of Jesus in the Old Testament. And let me just say, oh, here we go, there's an illustration. Praise the Lord. I'm an illustrator. Amen. Well, they didn't have potatoes, but we're going to picture this as corn, okay, in this bag here. And my suit's going to look terrible after this, but it's all right. But you know what? When Joseph began to fill their sacks with that corn, he didn't only give them what they needed. The Bible says he put treasure in the corn. Why don't you think about that just for a minute tonight? And you know what? Those guys returned to Egypt, and they confronted the steward of Joseph, and they said this. They came near to the steward of Joseph's house and they communed with him at the door listen what they said and said sir we came indeed at the first to buy food and it came to pass that when we came to the end we opened our sacks and behold every man's money was in the mouth of his sack and our money in full weight and we cannot tell who put our money in our sacks and he said peace be unto you and fear not because in Genesis 43 verse 23 he says the God of your father hath given you treasure in your sack he said it's no mistake boys he said it was God that put treasure in your sack you know boy I got a blessing uh, when I heard that and began to think about the Bible says in the house of the righteous is much treasure and you know what you begin to consider those treasures that God has given us tonight and that Joseph gave to his brothers you know what they were hey they were undetected treasures 
Do you realize this, that whenever his brothers uh, left that place, they had no idea what their brother had put in their bag. <laughs> they were, are you listening to me? They were walking through their life, carrying around something they had no idea what was even in it. They were undetected treasures that Joseph, woo, out of the goodness of his heart, said, boys, I'm going to give you something and you may not even realize it's there. And can I say tonight in my life, God has done some things for me, listen, that I didn't even know about. God has got involved in ways in my life I had no idea it was him. Hey, listen, tonight you've got some things you're carrying that might be heavy, but you've got some things in your bag that God's put there and you don't even realize how good that it is. I praise the Lord tonight. Listen, that God's watching over us. Hey, God's watching over us and our families and our ministries. I thank God, listen, as I go along the way that he's behind me and he's beside me and God's before me looking out for my good. And sometimes I don't even know it's there. Isn't that wonderful? Hey, tonight you've got some things that you ought to be grateful for. You say, oh, I don't have anything to be grateful for, friend. You've got things you have no idea that God has put in your life. But then let me say this. They were not only undetected treasures, they were undeniable treasures. Oh, my soul. These boys got home and they had no idea what they were carrying, but when they opened their sacks up there, they began to look in it and there was no question in their mind that what got in there didn't get there on accident. <laughs> Somebody put those things in there on purpose. That it was no accident what ended up that treasure <laughs> where it did. <laughs> And let me say tonight, I've got some things in my life and there's no denying that it was God that did it. That it was God that got involved in my life. Hey, you think about the time that God, and listen, the prayers that he's answered in your life. The times that you needed an answer and boy, it was desperate. You know what? God made a way when there seemed to be no way in your life and give you exactly what you needed when you needed it. I got a blessing. I'm not sure where Miss Sue Ledford is, but I seen her. I started talking to my wife about it today. This happened several years ago, but me and my wife uh, were having a hard time one evening, and uh, she began to share with me about some financial burdens we had, and that's always a bad day, let me just say. And uh, I'm not in charge of the money in my house. You say, well, you ought to be the man of the house. If I did, I'd be the man of the box, amen, because we'd be living in one. So thank God for my wife. <laughs> oh, we'll let her deal with the finances, and God's good. But uh, we laid, I remember in the bed one night, and she said, uh, she said we, we don't have the money we need to pay this bill. And she's upset about it, and she don't get upset too much, unless I've done something really stupid, which actually she gets upset pretty frequently. But anyways, <laughs> but uh, we began to talk about that. She began to cry, and she said, look, she said, we need $250. I said, I have no idea where we're going to get it. And she got upset, you know, she just kind of put her head over on me, and I thought... You know, what, what do you want me to do? <laughs> I was thinking, Lord, you know, she's looking for me for some consolation. I thought, you know, talk to God, you're saved. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. She, uh, you pray for her. She carries a lot of burdens at our house. But uh, she looked at me, she said, what we and I looked at her, and I said, sweetheart, I said, I'm not sure. I said, I guess we can just pray. You know, and I don't have a lot of faith. I've never had God, you know, move a mountain for me outside. But, uh, you know, I we got in the bed that night, and I just started praying with her, and she was weeping. I said, Lord, I said, you know we need this money. And I said, God, I said, we need it, you know, by Monday. I said, which means we really need it tomorrow, which was Sunday. And I said, Lord, I said, we're just going to believe that you're going to give it to us. And then I just said, God, I said, I just believe you're going to give it to us tomorrow. I said, I just believe you can. I said, Lord, we love you finished up and we went to sleep and woke up the next morning got on the bus never thought another thing about it I was walking in through the auditorium just doing what I did for Sunday morning all of a sudden uh, Miss Sue was our secretary at the time and she come walking through carrying an envelope in her hand she always come up God's good brother and she's always had a smile on her face and encouraging she walked and she said you know brother she said uh, somebody gave this to me and said wanted me to give it to you and man it's like God just absolutely I mean slapped me in the back of the head and said hey buddy there you go you say, what did you do? I do what every man does when he needs privacy. I run to the bathroom stall. Amen? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I, I did, man. I darted back through there, run into the stall, had to envelope my hand, close the door, and started opening that thing up the back and opened it up. And man, I started shouting. He said, How much was it for? How much do you think it was for? It was for $250. Amen. Exactly the need that we needed, man. I was rejoicing back there, and those guys in the bathroom thought, God help, something's going on back there with that guy. Amen. Hey, but I was just excited that God did that for me. It's not that much money, but God did that for my family. It was an undeniable thing that God put in my life. What a blessing when he does that. Hey, the prayers that he's answered. I, I started thinking about the privileges he's afforded. I've got some privileges in my life tonight that are undeniable. I thought about my marriage today. I thought, you know what? My marriage is a privilege that God's given me. My wife, the last thing she said to me before we left the house, before I left the house that afternoon, she said, baby, said, I love you. I'm praying for you. I thought, praise the Lord for that. I got a family that's saved. This morning I sat back there with uh, the principal of our school right across from him, and uh, we was just rejoicing as our kids were singing, Jesus saved me. And I watched the mouth of my kids begin to move. And you know what? They weren't just singing words. It was something that had really happened in their life. Man, that's a treasure I wouldn't trade anything for. What a blessing that is. Hey, the marriage that God, the family that God's gifted me with. Hey, the ministry God's gifted me with. What a blessing it is to serve the Lord. Hey, look, you say, what do you do, man? I'll do whatever what needs to be done. I teach a Sunday school class on Sunday and I try to give my heart to it and love them. And me and my dad have worked on a bus route over the last 12 years. And it's just a privilege to be able to serve God. It's an undeniable treasure God's given me. I thought about, listen, not only uh, the ministry, I thought about the message that God's given us. What a privilege it is tonight. I'm not worthy, but you know what? Man, I get to open this book and preach it. And there's times in my life when I get discouraged and sit at home by myself and say, God, would you speak to me? And flip over and there's times, man, when I've wrote stuff in my Bible that, well, God spoke to me. You know what I can say? Boy, hitherto hath the Lord helped me. Well, God has put some undeniable things in my life. I, uh, I'll just throw this one in. Hey, how about this? Hey, how about, I thought about the master that he's given me. What a privilege it is to have Jesus tonight. What a blessing it is to know the Lord as our Savior. But let me say, not only were they undetected and undeniable, but they were undeserved treasures. Joseph had mistreated their brother. Joseph's brothers had mistreated him and they tried to kill him and forget about him and just completely put him out of their minds. But you know what? Despite, boy, you listening to me tonight. Despite all the things they had done against them, Joseph still showed them favor. And when they stood before him, you know what? He could have just given them mercy by not taking vengeance on the brothers. But he did one better than that. He showed grace and he put treasures Amen. in their sack. Amen. Joseph said, you don't deserve this, but boys, because I love you, I'm going to give you something you don't deserve. And tonight, every good thing in my life that I have and that I enjoy, I don't deserve it. And God should have taken vengeance against me, but you think about yourself tonight. You think about the house you live in. You think about the spouse you sit beside and the children that live in your house and the ministries where we get to serve. And regardless of what it is that God lets you do, it is an undeserved thing that God's given us. But I thank God that he's put treasure in my sack. And man, I praise the Lord for that. Hey, he has gifted me with provision. Let me finish by saying this finally tonight. I'm watching the time. 30 minutes right on it. Amen, Brother Fluor. We got to get you, brother. We got to get you up here. Number three, let me say this tonight, finally. Let me say, not only has he guided us with providence and gifted us with provision, but God has girded us with potential. You say, what do you mean? Well, I begin to think about that little lad. And the Bible says there's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes. And, you know, I begin to draw my attention to the setting of this location where. All these thousands of people were gathered, watch me now, to see Jesus. And the Bible says that the daybreak began to come or, or dawn began to settle in there. And the Bible says they had nothing to eat. Here stood this great multitude of people that were in need, longing for something to fill the void that was in them. But who could fill such a need? I want you to notice, secondly, the significance of this lad. 
The Bible says there is a lad here. You know, I started, th I started considering his importance. And, you know, to be honest with you, there's nothing special about this boy. As a matter of fact, the disciples didn't even know his name. But you know what God did? <laughs> and he was just an average boy. But you know what? He was available. Because God said there is a lad here. And God took note of that. And then we see this. We see not only his, listen, not only his importance, but his investment. He didn't have much to give. Five barley loaves, two small fishes. He didn't have much to offer. How could something so small be of any significance to God? I asked myself that question tonight before I got up. I said, Lord, how could something so worthless help anybody tonight? You see, the skeptics of this lunch, the Bible says, but what are they among so many? The disciples were critical of this lad and his lunch, and they said, basically, what could this possibly do? And I know the answer to that question, nothing. Hey, what he had could absolutely do nothing for anybody. It was incapable of helping those people. But then watch this, and we're done. Notice the supplement of the Lord. Just like this lad, all we have to offer, are you with me tonight? All we have to offer is insignificant and insufficient. It has no potential to succeed unless God gets involved in it. And if God gets involved in it, man, what a difference it, and by the way, what a difference it made when what he gave got into the hands of God. You look in this story, you know what you see? That God took what he gave and he began to modify it. The Bible says that he broke it. And he began to work with it and change it. But not only that, but then God began to magnify it. The Bible says that he blessed it. It was so inadequate until God got on it. It was so useless until God got involved in it. And tonight, you know what? That's the way we are. Hey, folks, don't fool ourselves. We're nothing tonight unless God gets involved. Have you ever tried to do something and thought, Lord, I'm so inadequate for what I'm doing, and all of a sudden God gets involved in your field, and man, what a difference that it makes. Tonight, the needs of this multitude were met, but it was not because the lad, it was because the Lord got involved in what he was doing. And when you look back on your life, uh, listen, you may have already checked that, I don't know, but when I look back on my life, here's what I know that I had no potential at all to be or do anything if God hadn't got involved in it. And God hadn't took what I had and put his hand, and by the way, he multiplied it and he increased that influence like never before. God used this lad in a way that he never imagined. Brother, you bring that picture up, Brother Marvin, you with me? I'm throw this up there. The lad probably thought the same thing that this turtle did. I didn't get here by myself. I didn't get here by myself. I had help. And you know something tonight? Where you are and what's happened in your life, you didn't get there by yourself. You've had help. And as Samuel said, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Hitherto hath the Lord helped us. He said, come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never cease and call for songs of loudest praise. The writer of that hymn said, here I raise my Ebenezer and hither by thy help I've come. And tonight I thank God that I can look in my life and without question I can say these words, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. And I'm glad that it's not just something that's bound to the past, but it's available for the present. That what we got in our life tonight and the needs in it, that God's able to help us. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you tonight for how wonderful that you are. God, I thank you for how you have stirred my heart tonight with your goodness. And as I begin to think about, Lord, that little phrase there, hitherto hath the Lord helped us. Lord, I looked at how you providentially have guided my life to where I am today. And Lord, I don't deserve to be a part of New Man Baptist Church 
I don't deserve to have, Lord, the privileges I do in this ministry, but Lord, I didn't get here by myself, God. I had your help that got involved in my life, and Lord, I got overwhelmed tonight. You may not have done it for them, but God, as I begin to think about the treasures that you, Lord, have put in my life, they're so undeniable. And Lord, I praise you for the things you've done for me. And God, I thank you for the potential that you've equipped my life with. Because Lord, without you, it'd be nothing. But Lord, because of your help and your hand, Lord, I'm able to do something I could never do because of your help and your grace. And I praise you for that. And I pray tonight you'd meet the needs that are represented in this building. And I pray they'd realize that help, Lord, from you is still very much available. Lord, I thank you for all you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray, preacher. You've come. Thank you.